Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I am your host, Corey Deering, and alongside me is none other than the PC Muscle Race himself, Mr. Leron Dawkins. What's poppin'? No sleeves today, huh? When do I ever wear sleeves? We decided to bring the show back, <laughs> and you're already in full Leron mode. Oh, you know what? I can go. I can go put a better Just shirt shut on. Up I mean, and I, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know it was formal attire tonight. My bad. <laughs> also joining us, Leron, is <laughs> what? I, you <laughs> moved her again. I hate this. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had this really nice introduction planned, but Stoy is here. Stoy from EXP Cast is here. Oh my god! With it, with his girlfriend Tifa. Thanks for introducing her. I, you know, I didn't want her to feel left out. No, I was worried you weren't going to say anything, and I thought this was going to be a whole big thing in the intro, and I thought we were going to start fighting right away. It was, and then you ruined it because you moved her. Again. I ruined it. I ruined it. I she guess just I got in. She just wanted to sit in a better we, position. We didn't want her to feel like a third wheel or yeah. fifth, fifth, sixth fifth, wheel. Fifth, four, fifth. One, two, three, four, fifth wheel. Yeah. Okay. Rounding out yeah. this troop tonight. That voice you hear is Stephanie, writer extraordinaire. That's what hey. I have written in the notes. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Like swimmingly. Great. Yeah. It's dandy. Great. Fine and dandy, like sour candy. Mm. Mm. Well, wow. we did it. We brought the Boss Rush podcast back. Woo-hoo! Yes! So, is, so is this the inaugural, like, first one? The, 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 it, it's, what do they call it? A reboot? It's it's like a volume two is how we're looking at it. Like a, like So a, is this technically a remake or a remaster? I would mm. Mm, I would say it's like a it's like a new game plus. You know, the, new game plus. Okay. Yeah, the, the all new, almighty boss Rush podcast. Yeah. So, hey, that's so our. T- that should be the title. That should be the title. The all new, almighty boss Rush podcast. <laughs> plus. Mm. Plus. 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 Championship edition. Turbo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super. Uh, Director's cut. Yeah. DX. Uh, does it have a color dungeon if you put it in your Game Boy Color? <laughs> oh, yeah, I about that. oh man, we are off to a swimming start. When are we gonna, what, when are we gonna start making amiibos of ourselves? Mm. <sighs> you mean you haven't already? Uh, what's uh? Oh, wait, what's 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 the bonus item that we give out in the game when you scan us though? Okay, mm-hmm. so if you were to be an amiibo, what would be a bonus item you would give out, uh, Laurent? Uh, oh wait, come back to me. Come back. I need to, I, come no, back. no, <laughs> this was your this was this your was thing, Laurent. You yeah. started this. Mm. So clearly, you had an answer ready. I did not have an answer. Ready. <laughs> I asked a question. I, I wanted to hear what everybody else wanted to say. If I let's see, you if I would, if I if if I were to give out a freebie as an amiibo in a game, uh, it would probably <laughs> it would probably it would probably be the strawberries and cream uh, muscle milk. <laughs> oh gosh, the, pre- the pre-mixed stuff, not the powder, because because uh, come on, we're, we, what barbarians do the powder stuff anymore? Okay, so plus twenty damage. That's what you would give, basically. Yeah. <laughs> plus twenty damage. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Strength stat increase. Yeah. There you go. Mm. So. Mm. Wow. Is anyone else going to take a crack at this? No. Well, you know what's really no. funny? I can. I can think of what Eddie's would be if he was an amiibo, but not for myself. He would just hand out snacks. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. That, that, he that would just sounds... have snacks fall from the sky. That, that yeah, sounds. And, that sounds on brand. It'll be like you know at random, so you can get like a super nutritious snack, which is unlikely, or a <laughs> bad burn hole in your stomach snack. I bet you Eddie's the one making those Skittles commercials. Probably. Uh, that sounds like something he would do. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. I would like to maybe hand out coffee, maybe make your character go a bit faster. Hmm. Sounds great. Yeah. I could use some coffee, but also I have to be up and like, it's, it's fine. Everything's it's fine. fine. It's Everything's fine. fine. <laughs> Everything's fine here now. Thank you. How are you? It's a great, great. Yeah. Hmm. Han Solo. Great character. 
I don't know if anybody knew that. He's a good character. So, okay, so before we get into whole, the whole thing, the show, the topics, whatever, Laurent, we kind of ended on a note for this show the last time where we kind of didn't really know what direction to take the show, so we kind of, I don't want to say eliminated it, but it it was on hiatus, and we didn't really know how we were going to bring it back, and I'm not, like, I, at a point when we were recording, probably like, I don't know, maybe after E3, like the first episode after E3 or whatever, my thought was like, we do so much, we have so many people involved with the other shows do we really need the boss rush podcast and what purpose does it serve right because uh people who have been listening to us for a long time know that the boss rush podcast started because ed jesse and i didn't have time to do arsenal x and pal block so we merged them together into one show right then obviously we brought the other shows back boss rush still existed and we just kind of it never really had an identity of its own because that was always its identity, right? So now I feel like we brought it back. And this is this is me personally, is like I felt like even though the network might not need this show, I feel like selfishly I think I need this show a little bit. And like I feel like it's a way for all of us to interact because I felt like we lost that when the show disappeared, right? Where like, yeah, everybody like power block has its crew. Arsenal X has his crew. Crossroads has his crew. Celeste is doing her interview stuff. Right. And like, but there wasn't that show where we all came together, you know, or at least like a form of all of us came together. And I felt like, I feel like this is the show that it's like, it's like the glue that holds us all together. You know, it's like the, the point where you're like, hey, man, let's let's grab Stoy this week. Let's grab Stephanie this week. Let's let's get more people involved. Let's get entertainment stuff involved. Let's get the writing stuff involved. Like, I feel like this is and this is the way we kind of decided that it's going. We're going to come together. We're going to bring up topics, whether it's a, a banter piece from the website, whether it's like a, something going on in entertainment, what we're playing, maybe what we're watching, that kind of thing. And uh, I don't know. Laurent, how do you feel about it? Uh, Because we've actually been talking about this for a while. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, this is the this is the flagship for for Boss Rush Network. Uh, As a matter of fact, not only did not only has uh, the Boss Rush podcast gone through a rebranding, also Boss Rush as a whole went through rebranding. We're now we're now the network, and not just Boss Rush Games on stuff. And and honestly, with uh, with all the work and dedication that that a lot of our contributors put on the website and stuff like i i think one of the best things that we can do as a service for all for all of our talent is to actually appreciate and have our talent you know on boss rush on the boss rush podcast and things like that uh it just it just also helps like you know like a lot of people go to the website they read our articles they read our banters they read our rants they read our editorials they read our reviews and stuff like that you know but the the actual podcast shows Arsenal X, Pal Block, Crossroads and stuff. That's like one one tenth of the talent at, at Boss Rush, and so it's time to display and show off some of the other some of the other talented people. You know, also you know like when you start seeing the face and hearing the voices behind it, it's a lot easier to like digest the articles and stuff like that. And that's one of the things I want. I I, I thought we could really do. We could celebrate our talent here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like it's really easy. It's easier like when you see the faces attached to the the writing stuff, especially because like the podcast stuff, like you either watch us live or you watch us on YouTube, whatever. It's it's easier to find our faces everywhere because, mm-hmm. well, look at this. Who do, who doesn't you know? Hey. But uh, look at us. Man. I know. Look at us. <laughs> look, at us. <laughs> look at us. I put on my best hat tonight mm. just for you, Stoy. You know. Cap face back. How does that saying go? Like uh, backwards cap, like Fred Durst. Hmm. Oh man! <laughs> sure. I had a really good Limp Biscuit line in in this show, but hmm. I forgot it now. Hmm. I feel like just. I feel like you just mentioning Fred Durst though. Like like insult. It like is an insult for Corey. I mean, I. <laughs> I no, it's no, not, not like at all. Not at all. It's not, not like I all. haven't been hearing Fred that Durst for is like. Amazing human being, Corey. You should be honored. 
to be compared here's, to Fred Durst. Here's the thing, though. I've been hearing that ever since I started podcasting, like seven or eight years oh, okay. ago. So it's not like it's not like a new thing. I, yeah, I suppose somebody, Fred Durst doesn't have a monopoly on backwards caps. Yeah. <laughs> I do have the red one, though, if you want me to go get it. <laughs> is it a Yankees ball cap? It it's is, be a actually. Ball cap. Okay, there we mm-hmm. go. Uh, I stopped episode. wearing it because of that reference, by the way. Yeah. Still in the closet, though. It's fine. You it's never know. Fine. It could go out of style, then you could bring it back. I, I could, but nobody's ever going to forget early 2000s. Fred Durst and Limp Bizkit. Let's be honest. True. Let's, true. Let's mm-hmm. be true. honest here. It's like it's like when Justin Timberlake had the curly hair and in sync. Nobody's ever <laughs> gonna forget that. No. No. I don't think I, Justin is either. No. You can't unsee certain things. Hmm. You know, Corey, one day you're gonna stand up and you're gonna say, This time you're gonna let it all go wild. And this time you're gonna stand up and shout. Hmm. And you're gonna say to yourself, You're gonna do things your way. It's your way. Your way of the I hate highway. Him so much. <laughs> One of these days, you're gonna, you're gonna say all that. <laughs> Who invited okay. this guy? <laughs> Should have invited Ooh. Mark. All right, all right, Stoy. I think it's time to have you back on Crossroads. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but like even even Stoy though is like, you know, EXP. You guys have a video version, right? Your stuff's on YouTube, right? Yeah, Your we uh, stuff. yeah we put clips of our episodes. So yeah. like anytime we talk about particular topic or if we do like a little game review yeah we we post clips on our plus on our youtube channel plus you're you're a permanent co-host on arsenal x now so i mean like it's it's easier to see your face but stephanie is like she's the one person here that's not on a podcast regularly i mean yeah not that we don't want you regularly but you know it's like i mean i'm just the mysterious guest I mean, I even have like a different name when I'm a writer. I don't have an identity. Yeah, she's Fair. got a she's got a trade name. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's cool. She's, she's cool though. Crossroads, though. She's cool though. Though I mean, like I wish I was that cool. Mine's dumb. Hey, hopefully soon I could even make an appearance on Arsenal X because somebody's getting a Series X. Yes, Ooh, I had to work in there. Let's do it. Sunday nights, eight thirty. Those wow, those quick definitely- load times. Stephanie actually beat me in the race for for a Series X cuz I'm trying to get one too. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to get a PlayStation 5 at some point now. Cuz I mean there's actually games I want to play on it now. So it's uh anyways. What was I saying? Where did this all God, I'm oh, so sorry. distracted uh, now. So network. initially you guys were talking about Oh, right. Okay. So the- Stoy's easy face. So Stephanie is like she's your copy editor you're kind of in charge of the writing stuff now with David and, and like nobody really can, nobody really gets to see your face and apply it to like the, what you're writing, right? Like the bucket list idea was such a great idea. Right. And, and I think it was an amazing feat that we did that. And now like our goal here is to, is to promote the people that do amazing things there too. So like, yeah, hopefully you'll be, uh, uh, Semi constant on the show too, so. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of why we decided to bring it back. There's there's a lot to do within Boss Rush that we we should show praise and thanks for, uh, not just the people who put their faces on camera, but you know the people that work diligently off camera. So. Mm-hmm. Well, not to be cheesy but if it if we're if the name's been updated to network having different people you know come through and introduce themselves on the show that's how you define networking really yeah 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 so, and remember i started off as a fan right like in my one on my 1v1 i kind of mentioned that first started with nintendo power block then i went to listening to um just boss rush and then you know because at a playstation i started listening to crossroads but I didn't know about all like the other um, uh, members like Lore Together and EXP cast. And then, you know, I started getting talking to Pat and Stoy and they're freaking hilarious. So now I always, always listen to their shit. So like ha- introducing and have conversing with these people here is a great way to let people know about, you know, mm-hmm. all this awesome stuff. Yeah. Plus, like, I feel like if you can put a face to a personality and apply it to like what you're reading or, or something like it's it it makes it that much more enjoyable, you know, like a lot of the times when I used to go to like IGN or game informer or something, and I would listen to the, their podcasts or whatever. 
and apply that name to the article. You could kind of like hear that person's voice as you're reading it and like apply their personality to it or whatever. And like, I mean, that's something that I do. I don't know if anybody else does. Maybe I'm just weird, but you know, I never did that. I thought Stephanie, you and I talked about that once before, how like if you read a book, like do you read it in a particular voice? Mm -hmm. I, I was talking to someone about that and I don't, I, I read very boringly. Stoy plays every part in the book he's reading. <laughs> yeah. Every part is me. Like the villain is me. The hero is me. The heroine is me. I'm all the females and the males. <laughs> I mean, the dogs, oh, too. oh God, oh God, I'm the, the narrator the, too. Oh God, the romance scene. Ooh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, yeah, that there's gets some, a little weird. There's some stoy on stoy action. <laughs> well, the thing Hot is that I'm pretty sure stoy action coming to my head. I'm pretty sure you toss in a Russian accent or two. It's fine. Absolutely. Well, today I accidentally made fun of a a, a woman with an English accent, and I was like, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> You should hear my Russian accent, I said to her afterwards. She's like, oh, I bet you it's brilliant. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's that's a good time. So, Stoy awesome. and, and Stephanie, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, it's it's going to be a good time, I feel like. Thank you for, thank you yes. for embracing us and inviting us. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say. Uh, oh, my gosh, uh, Leron. What? 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 <laughs> just kidding. I, I was just, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say, like, you know, we're, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna shake things up. We're gonna have fun. You know, like, it's gonna, it's gonna be different, but it's gonna be the same Bossers podcast that you always know and love. And yeah. You're just, you're just gonna see more of our, more of our extended faces. Not, not, not me and Corey are always gonna be here. <laughs> not always. That's not what? true. We're both always gonna be here, Laron. Always. Okay. okay yeah, don't every say week. Such I was, I you was trying. You guys are going nowhere. <laughs> I was trying to fire myself. Thanks. Mm. Thanks. It is life. We can't fire you. You get the clicks. Because <laughs> I don't know. Listen, there always has to be a face and a body for the podcast. And Laron, you fit both. Yeah. Oh, wow. ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah. It's definitely not mm -hmm. me. So oh, this, this body's kind of like 20 pounds overweight right now. I don't know if they want all that. Man, according to the BMI chart at your doctor's office, everybody's overweight. <laughs> That's fair. I'm, I think I'm technically obese. <laughs> I'm afraid to see what mine says then. <laughs> Jeez. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Uh, anyways, so before we get into uh, topics, so basically the, the format of the show is there's going to there's gonna be four of us here. Everybody's going to bring a topic. We're going to talk about what we've been playing, watching, doing with our lives. Everybody's going to kind of bring a topic, and we're going to talk about that topic. And then on our the, – the plan is is for the show to – the full show to release on Monday. And then – Monday night through Friday night, we're going to release the topics as pod clips uh, oh. on on the website and on YouTube. Because, like, pod clips, Laron, you and I talked about pod clips for a while, too, where, like, theoretically, it's a good idea. But mm -hmm. for me, at least, I know Crossroads, for some reason, you get, like, one that hits, like, a gajillion views every week at some point. Uh, yeah. I just feel like I have, like... Maybe we were just flooding the channel with them or something, but like, I just feel like I, personally I haven't been doing the pod clips in a way that is productive, right? And it just mm -hmm. felt like extra work for no reason, right? So, the the what I want to try to do with pod clips is is do what we've been playing and then the four topics as pod clips at night throughout the week, right? Because we'll have like a one of the main podcasts goes up during the day, a pod clip from this show goes up at night, and then. You know, whatever happens, happens. Uh, but we do, we have a couple of announcements as well. Real quick. Uh, Leron. Okay. We're, we're going to be doing Boss Rush After Dark as a <laughs> weekly supplemental show. Uh, you guys are making a Pornhub channel? Yeah. <laughs> making one. We already have one. Where have you been? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clearly, clearly not on Pornhub. Why not? <laughs> If I search it right now, am I going to find it? I hope not. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to go into incognito mode. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna... uh, So the plan with After Dark is we want to get to a point where uh, we've talked about launching a Patreon at some point because I feel like a lot of people do a lot of work uh, at Boss Rush and 
I feel like a lot of people deserve to be rewarded somehow as well as like our if you want extra content from us nothing so the boss rush podcast and all the base shows are still going to be free right like there's no no early access really to anything uh no like whatever nothing is going to be behind a paywall if you want stuff like our bonus content uh some of it early some of it is is going to be exclusive but if you want some of it early like after dark's going to be i think like a week early for patrons and if not then you just get it a week later on a separate feed so uh leron is going to be hosting it i think it would be pretty boring and pretty sad if i hosted it so we're gonna get somebody that's exciting and you know oh come on you know somewhat visually appealing to host the show (laughs) and like you know so is leron gonna be in like a hot tub or something yeah it's 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 hot tub twitch streams actually (laughs) it's got yeah i'm I'm gonna green screen a hot tub (laughs) that'd be that's actually a hilariously awesome idea actually (laughs) I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Super right easy to do. Um, right super easy to do. Down. So, Leron, you, do you want to tell people what your idea is for After Dark? I mean, we've talked about it, but I think yeah. it's a great idea, to be honest okay, with you. Okay, so, all right, so, all, 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 all kidding, all jokes aside, After Dark is basically, okay, like, you guys you guys see a lot of us, you know, uh, you know, in our persona, you know, on our individual shows and stuff like that. So, whether it's Crossroads, Arsenal X, like, uh, uh, Nintendo Power Block and stuff like that, you see us when we're still being gaming dorks and stuff like that. But guess what? We, like, we don't always have that on 24-7. So, you know, like, so, After Dark is going to be one of those shows where you actually get to learn more about our normal personalities and some of our normal personalities are pretty dorky too so don't worry you'll see that you mean uh, Laron, they, you're not a uh excited playstation podcast host 24 hours a day 27 oh, days no. a week oh no because i'm an i'm an it guy which means i also do computer stuff god you know? you're a nerd i i nerd. live on i live on the internet 18 hours mm-hmm. a day which which also brings complications do you also sleep in life. your star trek pajamas god <laughs> oh my god yeah, and it's and it's a red shirt too. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, but basically uh, with After Dark, basically you know like it's going to be the show that we don't really talk about games. If games come up, it happens. But you know we're not always talking about games. We're talking about like real life stuff. Things things that things that are important to us. And and we'll also have a spin on it. You know we'll, we'll try to make it so like it's something that's definitely interactive for the uh, for for the audience and for the fans and stuff like that. For the fans, but <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Only fans. Only fans. Only the fans. Only, only the fans. Only <laughs> only the fans. fans. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but basically, you know, like people also want to know that we're we're human beings and stuff, like not just like super nerd ninety nine, like like the host of Nintendo Power Block, you know. <laughs> yeah, those nerds. <laughs> nerds. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, that's basically the premise. Like you know, like sometimes sometimes it might be a little not safe for work, but you know, for the most part, and I don't I don't mean visually. I don't mean visually not safe for work. I, <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much after dark in a nutshell. Like it's just gonna it's gonna be us being ourselves and talking about things and and kind of talking about things that are kind of relevant. So you know, like hell, there might be a little bit of politics involved. There might be just a little bit of normal day everyday life stuff involved. You know, like shoot, like. I don't know, like what? What's uh, we might just have like one of those philosophical conversations. What's like the best way to cure cancer or something? You know, none of none of us are smart enough to really figure that out. But you know, it might be nice to talk about it. <laughs> and uh, no, that's not a topic. That's just the first thing that came to my mind. I know. Like, oh this, man, this I was starting to think of some ideas. Like <laughs> me too. I was like, huh. <laughs> well, so don't, if you could stab it with a bunch of radiation, that could be one way to do it. Well, don't be. Well, don't be like a former ruler. Uh, not ruler. Like a former. A former. A former president of our country and like is like drinking bleach and stuff, you know. No, mm-hmm. don't do that. Sick. That's don't. one way to do it. We'll write that one down. Just kills everything. What's, every, what's everybody using now? Horse something? Horse tranquilizers Ivermectin. or something? Yeah. You as a pharmacist, I just want to like gouge my eyes out, eyes or ears out every time I see or hear that crap. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that just made me very angry. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not. You're not up on your horse tranquilizers yet. You're not <laughs> yeah, a horse dewormer. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to rot my insides out. But you know, see, that could be a, that could be another conversation. Like Stephanie is like a pharmacist in real life and stuff like that. So we could talk about some of the crazy antics that she's encountered without her violating violating HIPAA. <laughs> <laughs> 
Got plenty of stories during my overnight shifts back in the day, for sure. As long wow. as you don't say names, that's it. Nope. Mary C. Says. <laughs> Mary C. <laughs> <laughs> Or like from the office, there is this dentist named Mr. Crentist who walked into the store. <laughs> I I had to do that for some social media posts for something I was doing for my other job. And uh, you're not allowed to use real names. So she's just like, make them, make them up, make them up. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> uh, fake like, Do I get fun. points for creativity? Mm. No. I think you should. I don't. No points. Uh, so the other thing, the other the other kind of announcement here is uh, I've been working on a revision of we, we used to have the show called Standard Definition. And it was basically, you know, just kind of like a general conversation type show. Uh, I do want to bring that back in some way, but not in the way of like what we were doing it's actually like the original idea for the show it's like a nostalgia show where like it it, say somebody has a real fondness for i don't know back to the future the assignment that week is the panel whoever's going to be on the back to the future episode watches back to the future takes notes and then we just talk about back to the future and that's nice. that's going to be that. Or if somebody has a fondness for, like, I don't know, Luigi's Mansion on GameCube. Like, we play Luigi's Mansion, talk about Luigi's Mansion, and then the next episode will be something different. So, oh, uh, that'd be awesome. That's, the, that's that idea for that show. It's not coming soon. I mean, it's going to be a couple months for that because I, I want to make sure we get After Dark rolling and some of the other stuff we're working on first, and then that'll be like a like a tertiary project that we do. Uh, but that is coming back. I'm, I'm excited to do it that way. Uh, cause the original idea we did had was, was cool. And like, we actually recorded like four episodes of it. We did one on the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, movie. We did one on men in black and we did one on the Dreamcast. Uh, it was me, Ed and Jesse. And let me tell you that men in black episode was, uh, it's on our YouTube channel if you want to watch it. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh, wow. That's all I have to say. It's. Uh... I'm trying to piece together what that long pause meant. I know. Right? Right? It's going to go in many directions. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what's coming for the Boss Rush podcast supplemental shows uh, coming soon. So that's the announcements. Hey, it's like our own, very own Boss Rush Direct. Yeah. Hey, I could do that. Mm. I'll do that at some point. We should do that. That'd be cool. Nothing. Yeah, nothing in relation to tomorrow's Nintendo Direct. Hmm. <laughs> Guys, wasn't it cool that Breath of the Wild Two is out like, now? Here's something from Laron. <laughs> yeah. No, snap. I no. We need to get somebody that doesn't know <laughs> how to snap and just can't snap. Oh, oh. I, I, you know, I can't do it with my left hand. I know I can't. <laughs> you know what? You know, what? I just realized like. I, I I have a wonderful idea. Like I think it's time. I think it's time for like the like different boss rush crews to infiltrate the other shows. And when I say infiltrate the other shows, I mean just take them over. Like yeah. like for example, Crossroads does an episode of uh of, of, of uh Pal Block. Uh, yeah. Ars- Arsenal X <laughs> Arsenal X does an episode of 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 uh of, of Crossroads. You know. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. 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 St- uh, yeah. Something like that. You know. I mean, sports um, do that a lot, right? Where like. The NFL commentators will take over a college game, and the college commentators will take over an NFL game or something. It happens in basketball too. So, yeah, uh, yeah. The main, the, the 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 big challenge though is like you know like you can't just come on the show and like come on somebody else's show and trash like no you have to stuff. do like, you, you have, have to do yeah. it right yeah, yeah. like yeah, you, have show, to, yeah. you have to give it you have to give it the college try like Laron <laughs> can't go on Nintendo Power Block and be like Whoa, Mario sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it like that. I Mario be, eats duty. I can be like, this is the reason why Mario sucks, and actually have a conversation about it. But you know, <laughs> loophole, loophole. Come on. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know. Did Pablock ever mention about how I think Mario is the greatest villain in video games? No. <laughs> well, it's an well, article on the Boss Rush Net. BossRush.net. Look well, it up. I know this. I know this. I alluded to the fact that Princess Peach is not just as, as innocent as everybody thinks she is. They're, like, her and like, Bowser are married. 
Exactly. Like, there's a reason why she keeps letting herself get kidnapped by Bowser. <laughs> yeah, because they're married, and Mario is the jealous villain. <laughs> Mario is the wor- is the video game's greatest. Isn't villain. The, isn't that basically the the story in Braid? Isn't that basically what that yeah. is? Yeah. I didn't play Braid, yeah. but I know that. It, mm-hmm. Aren't you playing the bad guy the whole time, like the jealous much, stalker yeah. guy or whatever? What a terrible, what a terrible premise for a game. But it was so shocking at the end when you found out. When you found yeah. out, yeah. Who yeah. oh, are man? You were the villain the whole time. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. That's that's. Those are the announcements. There'll be more coming soon. Just keeping you updated. But what are Sick. we? What are we playing, watching, doing, in our lives? Let me tell you guys. I've been watching Ted Lasso. Show. That is a that is a special show. I love that show. I didn't think I was gonna like it. If I had a nickel for every time someone told me to watch Ted Lasso, I'd have a lot of nickels. <laughs> here's me too. a he, shit ton of nickels. Here's the Enough thing to buy like a soda. Yeah. A six pack. <laughs> buy a dirty pack of dirty pack of Pabst. We all know nickels. Wow. Uh I I I have heard that if you are into soccer though it's like it's kind of a turn off but really i th- that's what i've heard people say who are like into soccer i think soccer. that's probably why i don't watch it yeah <laughs> oh, okay well because i i've heard and you know Corey, you may not know this but i i've heard a lot of characters in that tv series are based off of real players mhm like Makes one of the sense. more one of the more popular players that I know of, uh, Vinny Jones, he was actually, he actually did movies. Um, you know, he was, he was a uh, bullet tooth Tony in snatch, but he was a very fam- very infamous defender in England that, uh, would just jump kick and slam people to the ground. Jesus. Like legitimately, like, yeah, pretty hardcore. There's actually a very famous picture of him squeezing some dudes nuts, like a plainest picture is day, like him, just the hand handful of nuts. Right in his <laughs> right in his hand, like grabbing it and holding onto it tight, big old handful. This is really an apt description of this picture. I know. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, know. the picture shows it all. It's like you got a okay. whole handful of it. Like, you know we're, talk, we're talking full finger squeeze. Like hey, every uh, I, got, I gotta find. I gotta find this. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny oh. Jones and Paul Gascoigne. That's that's the picture you need to watch. You need to. Google. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type Vinnie Jones and and it finished and it finished it for me. <laughs> yeah, wow. so it's a very infamous picture. So anyway, wow. But yeah, um, go oh. on. Uh, oh, see, it's a handful. It's a handful. He's got it all. Jeez. Yes, I just all of it. Every God. every centimeter, because it's England and they do centimeters over there. Every <laughs> centimeter. <laughs> all Come in on, his hand. Talk about like it's like a lot. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Man, I just—it's just like, are Man, they? Okay, are they? Are these? Already like, are these, the are these guests on After Dark? Are these yeah. balls large? Like, why is this? Why? Like, why is this picture so in depth? Laurent, describe right. the picture to us. <laughs> okay, 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 legit. Le- okay, legit. So we got what we legit. got. This picture is. We're going to describe testicles. This is our first yeah. show back. This is we this got, is we, the content. This is here it is. Got, we got Vinny Jones and he's got this like he's got like this mean ass grit on his face. Like I mean like it looks like it looks like he's like gritting his teeth so hard that he's gonna like just fracture all of his teeth. And in his in his left hand is just full on is like uh, this dude's he's got this dude right by the crotch. And yeah. And um and poor Paul. I mean like you can see the look of agony on his face. It's as clear as day. <laughs> <laughs> and and of course and and of course you know every man has that stance when something's happened to their nuts. <laughs> yeah. And 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 that's what's happening in this picture. <laughs> He's trying to pull out of it, but yeah. Vinnie Jones has too much of a handful. Yeah. I, I think he's like, it's like a Venus flytrap around that dude's nuts, oh, just like man. all of it. It's like yeah. it's, it's like that, just not letting go. The disrespect, I swear. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, like, did, did he even get a card for that? <laughs> I don't know, actually, because 
Back then, they didn't have like instant replay. So, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if that was like, let's watch it again from a Dude. different angle now? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, in this day and age of sports, that would happen. You'd get multiple <laughs> takes of that, and like it wouldn't just be immortalized, you know, forever in like just a snapshot picture because this is a, like a black and white picture that I'm looking at. It'd yeah. be it'd be replays. It'd probably be on T-shirts and shit. <laughs> yeah, memes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, what year did that happen? What year was that? Ted Lasso. Sorry, I'm sorry to derail. I do that quite often. I'm sorry. But, it's but fine. No, but, so now but no, for I real will... though. Ted Lasso, like legit, like is like doing like caricatures of like actual like like soccer yeah. players. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. I thought I thought it was all just unique and different. No. Because I don't I don't watch I don't watch soccer on that level, so I I wouldn't know. Like I. Like I I, I watch soccer from time to time. I don't go all World Cup crazy. Like 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 nine tenths of the world does you know when it comes around and stuff like that i will watch i will watch a soccer game and not just when i'm at a sports bar or something okay so ted lasso and testicles Corey, what else Mm -hmm. yeah uh (laughs) well ted lasso just like i just like how positive the show is there's just like a lot of crap going on you know Mm. and it's just like it's kind of like just like a nice positive show that yeah who's the actor it's sudeikis uh jason sudeikis is ted sudeikis, lasso yeah. Yeah. yeah i i like him and speaking of boss rush network uh, we do have i believe weekly reviews on the entertainment side of things yeah mm-hmm. yeah the ted lasso reviews go up every saturday right saturday the entertainment reviews go up on saturdays i think or sundays one of those days one of or the other <laughs> yeah one of those days on the weekend that starts with this it goes up it's fine uh so I've also been playing a lot of Destiny, which is not like anything new. Uh, I've been playing Psychonauts though, Psychonauts Two, which is it's pretty good. If you like, uh, <laughs> I think it's better than Mario Odyssey personally. Uh, mm. I oh. I also and, and I just I don't really care for three two three D Mario games. I just don't think they're the best. Uh, Whoa! But <laughs> I swear, you know, you know, it's you know, what's funny about this right now. Like, like Corey's saying this right, and like on Crossroads last night, he was smashing all of Austin's hopes and dreams because like every game that Austin loved, <laughs> like Corey couldn't, like Corey couldn't stand. But every, I know, but I everything don't. that. Co- <laughs> But everything that Corey says about games, like, I actually love it because I have the same opinion. And, yeah, like, uh, 3D Mario games haven't really slapped for me in a while. Mm-mm. No. I I think the last 3D Mario game I actually completed, honestly, it was Mario 64. Like, uh, I mean, I guess Mario 3D World, technically, but I don't really count that as, like, a full 3D Mario game. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a weird one because it's, it's, like, like metric. Yeah. I I love Mario 3D World, though. I think it, I think it merges the two. Uh, yes perfectly i think it's i think i like the bite-sized levels but i also like you have the freedom to roam around a little bit uh, that is probably one of the funner co-op games to play because mm. it's so it's so um i don't know you um, could lose friends over that you can actually with that's pat true and, and pat really screwed me a couple times mm. i'll remember pat when you listen to this <laughs> i'm gonna remind like him a, every chance he gets it's like a one of those uh episodic games stephanie will remember this mm-hmm. yep <laughs> Actually, there's a Pat good... Stephanie off a cliff. Stephanie will remember this. Yes. <laughs> um, Corey, you should have like a segment where you just like talk about a, a hot take on a video game that's very popular and well-loved that you don't like. Mm. I, I mean, I could. I could do that right now. We talked a lot about Bioshock and The Last of Us last night. Uh, I feel like I've... Well, I think he already mentioned that Man, Psychonauts bro- 2 is better than Mario Odyssey, so that's... Hey, I can't argue that because I've never played Psychonauts yet. And two, believe it or not, I have not beat Odyssey. I tried so hard to love it. And I don't hate it. I just... I yeah, it, there's nothing special about it, I feel like. I... I watched my boy. I watched my boyfriend playing Odyssey, and uh, and I, I swear, like it's the most convoluted like Mario game to date, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is and this is coming from somebody that just did not have a wonderful time with Galaxy. I I, I did not. <laughs> yeah, I didn't finish Galaxy either. I just I, like, I, couldn't, I couldn't do Galaxy. It's yet. just it's just I don't know. I just don't think there's some, anything special about uh what was what were we talking Odyssey, God Galaxy oh. Odyssey whatever i yeah, i don't know odyssey. 
like throwing the hat is like a neat mechanic, but like there's clearly kind of quote unquote set pieces where you use it. And like, yeah, I get it. If you want to get all the, the moons or whatever, you have to throw the cap and do the dive stuff and whatever. That's it's cool. But like, I just feel like, I feel like there are other Mario games that do that stuff better, you know? Yeah. And, and it's just, Odyssey didn't really do it for me, but Psychonauts is like, I love the powers in Psychonauts. I love the telekinesis where you can just kind of like pick stuff up and, and move it around. And the, the clear distinction between this is a platforming section and this is a combat section is actually a really refreshing take on a 3d platformer. Uh, there's not a lot that gets in your way when you're platforming, unless it's like a very deliberate section where you're like, where they, they really just kind of map it out to you and say, Hey, there's enemies in this platforming section. You don't want to fight them, but you do have to dodge them. And it's, it's really nice to, to, it's just really charming. And the way they deal with, actually they deal with mental health in that game is really surprisingly accurate in a fun and kind of simple way it kind of just explains it in a really simple way that like i don't know it just it it makes everything so clear that you know maybe some somebody has is confused about something and you know why is mental health a big deal they kind of do that in a in a cool way where like you go i don't i don't really want to spoil anything but one of the first levels is like a casino level and one of the teachers seems to have a gambling problem right so you go into her brain, like the, the whole premise of Psychonauts is you go into people's brains and and kind of see what kind of world their brain produces, right? Um, so the teacher equates uh, risk with reward, and so that gives her a gambling problem. And like you use some of your moves to kind of detach risk from reward and attach reward to something positive or something that will change the course of her life because she has a gambling addiction. And it's really, it's really a neat way to process that information. Um, I really, I really like it. Um, it, it's a little, it, some, some of the parts are a little bit too long. Like some of the stuff drags a little bit, but, uh, it's only like a 12 hour game. And if you want to do everything, it's about, 16 to 20 i think so it's a nice it's a nice surprise i'll say that because i liked the first psychonauts enough but not enough to be like oh this is the greatest game ever i like double fine is one of those studios where like i appreciate what they try to do a lot i don't really enjoy playing their games but psychonauts was like the one game that i was like okay this is cool this is fun this is doing something interesting and then psychonauts 2 is like they have Microsoft money now, so they can make the game that they want, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so it was really fun to see, and and I'll probably end up finishing it this week. So you got me intrigued in this now. I mean, it's just sitting on my Game Pass library, like I could download it any day I want. But yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah like he's he spoke about it last night on Crossroads, <laughs> and and like hearing him speak more and more about it right now is like I'm, you know, I'm gonna take the plunge. Mm-hmm. I didn't really enjoy. I didn't really enjoy the first Psychonauts. Maybe it was just because I wasn't in the right headspace for it. Yeah, but um, I, I'm gonna give this one a shot. Yeah, you. I mean, it's not like it's not like the game where you're like you know sometimes there's that game where maybe you don't know what you want to play and you just pop in a game and you're like oh my gosh this is the game I'm committing to to like for 40 hours because it's so amazing. I wouldn't yeah. say it's one of those games, but like if you're in the mood for something simple and a, and you enjoy platformers and you enjoy quirky characters and like a positive spin on a lot of things and you know. The, the, I think the things that they do with mental health is actually really interesting too. So, I would give it a shot. It's on Game Pass. Uh, it's on PS4 also. So if you have a PS5 or PS4, you can play it there too. So, yeah. Uh, Stephanie, we're gonna go your way. What are you doing with your life? Ooh, that Loaded is question. a deep question. That's a but... lot. There's there's so much, guys. She's just trying to compartmentalize it. And... Exactly. I'll save some for after dark if I ever make it to one of those. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, you will be I'm... on. You will be on after dark. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't been watching a lot of TV because um, I kind of have to make sacrifices with my little bit of entertainment I have for myself um, with work and child rearing and stuff like that. Um, 
So I've been just, yeah, watching sports, you know, football season started. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, as far as games, I'm still slowly rolling through Skyward Sword HD, you know, because I've beat it on the Wii, I just don't really feel the urge to rush through it at all. I'm just kind of going through the motions and experiencing it. And my son is obsessed with Zelda. It's kind of my fault. I created this monster because he just wants to be Link for Halloween last year, this year, How for dare every you? year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but now, so he'll take the left, we, uh, I almost said we, oh, left Joy-Con. I have the right Joy-Con. He'll control where Link walks, and I, you know. Um, <laughs> how much is Jack Black in Psychonauts? Sorry, I just interrupted. Uh, I mean, yeah, I popped in the chat. He's in it quite a bit. Sorry, I I, I didn't answer it right away because we were in, a, in, a, in another section of the show. But... He's he's I mean he's in it. He's like one of the main characters. He's not he's not like Raz. Like he's not you're not playing as Jack Black, but he's in it quite a bit. You know, so he's funny. I mean, he's Jack Black. He's he's funny. He's there to be funny. So kind of sucks yeah, if he I wasn't. Yeah, I forgot about that. I think that's just another point for and reason for me to play it. Yeah. So thanks, Austin. Well, him and <laughs> him and Tim Schafer are like good friends. They're pals. So, They're yeah. pals. Yeah. So, all right, but yeah, so my son and I play Skyward Sword together. Um, I'm trying to get through Firewatch because there might be a talk the walk on that, and I, I want to be able to talk about it. Um, on my PS4, I'm just enjoying the vast world known as Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. So, I'm working through that, and I'm starting my fifth novel. So. A lot of my times, whatever time is left is going to that until I get my Xbox Series X. Because once that happens, I'm already created a list of all the games that are on Game Pass that I need to download and play. So now Ooh, that the my... nerd made a list. <laughs> yes, I did. It's like quadrupled now that I know I'm getting a Series X. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I can't wait to play all these games. Psycho Not 2, Halo 5. Hey, you know what? At least that was it's my not best a list impression of, of you. I'm sorry. Nintendo only titles. Okay, I'm expanding yeah. and diversifying. Story. Don't make That's me break right. out into some journey. That's right. You, you, you that's right. You, you, you stick a tool. <laughs> Fine. I'm gonna put you on mute just in case. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, just, you know, I hate to be pretty boring, but that's kind of it. I am excited about the Nintendo Direct tomorrow. I have plans that evening that I kind of want to cancel so I can watch the Direct because I'm a horrible person. Cancel them. But... Do it. <laughs> so, that's it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Skyward Sword is like a... It's a weird one for me. I'm trying. Like I, I like I'm enjoying it. Like I'm I'm not playing with the Joy Cons. I'm just playing. I I'm granted I haven't played it in like a couple weeks, but uh, I'm playing with the buttons and it's cool. It's cool, but like I wish the button layout was a little bit different. Just just like a little bit, you know. But uh, anyways. Yes, Austin. I am a Patriots fan. Mm. Yeah, but you're from there. It's fine. If she's from there, it's fine, Austin. Okay, <laughs> it's the people that live in the Bring middle. It. Yeah, God. Mm. <laughs> I bet. It, I bet it really hurts that Tom Brady won a Super Bowl last year, though, doesn't it? Well, not for me, no, because I don't know. I, I I'm also well. I am a fan of Brady. Maybe not as obsessed as some people take it. Like I know a lot of people mm. that have unhealthy obsessions. Yeah. Um, I'm, Hey, I'm more of like, Hey, good for you. You know, like I don't control go. what, um, how the, the Patriots, um, the, how they handle and how, you know, their team and stuff like that. Like that's just all political to them, money, whatever. So they make those decisions. It's, it's not me. So I'm happy for him. It just shows that he can, he's not too, too old to keep doing what he's doing. He can bring a horrible team and, and lift them up. Like that's, you know, like I said, it, it doesn't bother me. So he came in with a lot of demands. And I remember like people shit talking him in the beginning of the season because he was, he was pretty hard on his teammates, like making them do these things. And he's just like, screaming at him on the sidelines. But ultimately they became one of the most disciplined and successful teams that season, obviously the most successful team of the season. 
he because probably, of that kind of discipline. Yeah. He probably also force fed them avocado ice cream, you know, like he just knows what to do. That, that just sounds gross. Is, is that a thing? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Avocado, avocado ice, cream? ice cream? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, damn it, white people. Stop. <laughs> you need to stop with this shit. This is annoying. God. Yeah, there's there's a famous Boston radio station where they used to they used to kind of like poke fun at Tom Brady and his diet regimen because they'd really fo- they'd follow Brady very closely and they would talk about how he's all into avocado ice cream and all that jazz. I'm like, I don't know. I, there's certain lines that I I'm not sure I can cross. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's clearly doing I, something right. He's like 43 and still the best player in the NFL. So I mean, let's be honest here. I. I don't care for Tom Brady, but it, you can't deny that he's no, one of the no. greatest quarterbacks Something. who have ever lived. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he makes those sacrifices to achieve those results. <sighs> I'm fine with kind of eating my ice cream, my regular ice cream, and just not mm. having superpowers. I just, I just want to point out that uh, Baker Mayfield has the highest completion percentage of any quarterback in the NFL right now. Just, just going to throw that out there. Go Browns. <laughs> anyway. oh, man mm-hmm. anyways uh who's next who's stoy are you next you're next we're gonna go to you sure okay um i i just play games i don't get invested in tv shows because i get bored a lot um when i watch shows like i i it's almost like sometimes i just don't like that drama um so I'm not really watching anything right now. Most of my time is spent coaching. I coach soccer. I coach high school varsity. And that has this whole bag of bag of issues. But it's mostly fun. Um, but right now I'm playing Tales of Arise on my Series X. Um, probably the, t- the Tales game I love the most since Vesperia. That came out like almost like 10, 15 years ago now. But... Uh, yeah, so I'm really, I'm really into that. Like that one's really kind of taken up a lot of my time. Um, I ended up picking up a, a kind of missing a simulation game, so I ended up picking up this uh, motorcycle racing game just recently. So I spent a little bit of time on that. Um, but you guys remember Cruising USA? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they just came out with Cruising Blast on the Switch. Oh, really? And bro, it just—I mean, bro, and and bro at. Bro, yeah. I, I respond um, to bro. It's cool. Okay, I mean, you know, I get it. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much like reminiscent, hugely reminiscent of the old Cruising USA games, like crazy over the top, like you know, single track action. Uh, Corey asked me if you could race as a school bus. Yes, you can race Ooh. with a school bus. Um, you can run over like animals, like usual. The only thing that it's missing is the uh, weird stop motion animation bikini girl giving you a trophy at the end of your race. <laughs> that was a little awkward. Like as a 12 year old kid, like hoping your mom's not around like, shit. <laughs> you know, you just got to tell your mom, I'm going to race in games, mom. But, uh, yeah, so that's, it, it's got probably one of the most lamest theme songs out there. What but, this, what this particular game? Yeah. This, yeah. Cause it goes like cruise Come on, we're cruising. Oh God. Cruise. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm grinding my teeth. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Good thing you're not sitting next to me when I'm singing this. Poor Tifa. Yeah, I know. No kidding. She's just like, yeah, done. Anyway, so um, that's what I've been spending most of my time doing. Honestly, um, coaching is fun, and I I think that'll be my topic later on in the episode when we kind of like go through a random topic because uh high school kids are something else man <laughs> there's something else I, I i have a question for you uh what is um what is your favorite thing right now on tales of arise the reason what why I'm my asking, favorite the reason the reason why i'm asking you this is because it's also on my what have i been playing this week yeah i've actually played some games that were not monster hunter this past week hmm. what yeah yeah, I know. Wow. Right. What I know. Go? I know. It's like, oh, it's, no. like, it's like, it's like, yeah, I was about to say, it's like I'm growing up. <laughs> no, I, I, I honestly, Shion, the main female character, mm-hmm. is, man, she, she makes me so mad. 
Because she's such a bitch. Like she's she's a she bitch to everybody is. she meets. She and is. She, she's yeah. angry all the time, and she uses people for her own selfish benefit. But damn, she's probably got a very tragic backstory that I'm just waiting for that to drop. Yeah. For I'm her not... to be like, I was abused as a child. My parents locked me in a cave for hours and days and weeks on end and never fed me and everything. All I feel is pain and misery and suffering. And then it's like, damn, that is tragic. No yeah. wonder. <laughs> yeah, I'm not far enough in the game yet either, but I but I also am, am in agreement. Like, she is a bitch. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's where it's like, I mean, something has to be driving her. And I think I'm always... I've always been vested in characters. Sometimes story isn't enough to hook me. Like, they yeah. can, you know, a game could have the greatest story, but, um, you know, and that's why I latched on The Last of Us 2, because the storyline in that game sucked. The, 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 you know, the storyline of whatever, just murdering each other, whatever, that's it's kind of a shitty story. But yeah. um, the dynamic between... Um, Ellie and Laura, Laura, no, not Laura. I keep calling her that. Yeah, but, that's um, the actress that played her. That's the actress that plays her. But uh, yeah, Abby. Abby, the, yes. Those two characters are probably some of the most, the strongest video game characters, like in video games in recent today. Mm -hmm. So, um, Xion's character just intrigues me so much, and I think that's what's kind of like hooking me in because I'm like, you're waiting for you the shoe to drop. <laughs> yeah, and I'm waiting. I'm, I'm like finding out more and more about her. And there's those moments because there's a lot of character dialogue in this game. And, you know, you, you get these, like, there character is, dialogues. There is a lot of dialogue. You oh, know, it, Tales games are like that, man. I, I can't imagine how many hours of dialogue is, are in these games. But you really get to know the characters. And sometimes she lowers her guard where she kind of gets shocked when people want to help her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, why would you want to help me? Why would you want why would you want to do this for me? And that's where I think her story is kind of tragic because she was probably like alone her whole life, you know, had to fend for herself and all this stuff. And I mean, not to mention anybody that touches her. She like basically uh, know, has she, to take, she, them. She, she zaps the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah. So that's got to have its old ball of, you know, trauma. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Because uh, I was I was wondering, like like I said, I'm I'm also playing that game, so I was wondering what I was wondering what your take on. But you like the Tales of games, whereas I am a, I'm a person that I'm very leery of uh, JRPGs in this day and age. It's, well, I mean, actually, RPGs in general, like just don't they don't they don't do it for me anymore. It's been a, it's been a long time since they. I want to say, I want to say, the last time I really invested in an RPG was back in the PS2 days. Mm. Yeah, like so, like it took a lot for me to get into to get into Mass Effect. Even though Mass Effect is a game that, if you look at me, it's like right up my alley. But it took a lot of convincing for me to like say I'm going to give this game a try and stuff like that. You know, um, it also took a lot of convincing for me to, to get into uh, The Witcher Three. Like it took a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, The Witcher Three was kind of a slow slog. I know it. it, it yeah, it was the first few hours, kind of, you know. You, you're you you're just like hunting this animal for like four hours and it's like man is this what this game is going to be about yeah and that's when the story really picks up obviously a little bit afterwards but yeah mass and and that's the problem with mass effect the series because the first mass effect was kind was, of the it was weaker. a slow burn it was a slow yeah, burn. it was a very slow burn but it's worth it in the end because you develop you get so much lore out of it mm -hmm. that it makes playing through two and three that much more satisfying because you feel more vested in the in the world yeah story that was your one mass effect mention for this i was podcast. just gonna i was just gonna say that that was my one mention so that's it we're done <laughs> oh i i thanks I for kinda, reminding me <laughs> i kind of opened the door on that one I, I i was the one that brought it up <laughs> i know and i fell for it i fell for it wow but otherwise uh yeah that's um that's what i've been doing Neat, Leron. All right. Uh, well, um, as far as um, as far as what I've been watching, uh, I've I've been watching I've been watching the first well not the first season, the current season of uh, this this show from HBO called In Treatment. Um, uh, it was a it was an older show that kind of got like a, a I'm gonna say a soft reboot because um because oh. like. It, it originally came out, and I think Gabriel Byrne was the um, was the lead character, was a psychiatrist, and basically they rebooted this. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Dude, um, I love I love that show when it first was out years ago. 
Yeah, it's got Uzo uh, Aduba from um, from Orange is the New Black. She's the uh, she's the psychiatrist now um, in the show, and basically the show follows like you know. Uh, if you if you've seen a lot of shows that deal with like psychiatrists and stuff, like uh, like I think I think it was up till recently, like people just found out that you know like psychiatrists and psychologists and stuff, like they need their own like psychologists to like to like deflate all this stuff that they take in from from their clients and stuff because like, some of it's heavy. So um so yeah so basically I'm I've watched I I'm, I'm almost done with this uh this current season and um it's really good cuz basically it follows uh Uzo's character who is uh, her name is her name's Brooke she's the psychiatrist and she during and during the week oh well during her week she's got three clients and um and like the the talent on the clients is just amazing but man some of the stuff that they they put out is heavy as hell and then you start to understand why like you know why like most psychiatrists need to also talk to a psychiatrist you know at the end of their seasons and whatnot because it's it's a lot and man like i i didn't think i was going to get hooked on a show like that which is funny because like i did want to go to school for i was thinking about going to school for psychology so i don't know why this show wouldn't have gravitated to me but it actually it actually hooked me when i saw the very first episode um it's got um it's got some got some talent behind it and some good writing and uh and beyond that like uh like star trek's back on but it's star trek the animated version so like lower decks is on and basically if you like rick and morty you'll like this star trek (laughs) that's all i'm gonna say (laughs) all right and um no uh it's one of those ones like um i will say this like like lower decks leans heavily into all the star trek tropes and stuff like that so like so like if you're not really if you're if you're like one of the new age Trekkies, like you're probably not going to get all the jokes and everything. You, you had to have been watching it, you know, since at least the John Luke Picard and, you know, Next Generation and all that stuff started, you know. Uh, and then um, I I am playing catch up on What If. I'm a Marvel's What If. I am one episode behind. Do you yeah. like What If? Are you are you enjoying it? You know what? Here's my here's my honest take on What If. I feel like I feel like the episodes are too rushed. And, you know, I. I I feel like if the episodes were like forty minutes to an hour, it'd be they'd be a little more satisfying. Because I'll be honest with you, like the way most of these episodes are ending is is not really like is not really doing it for me. Like for example, like um like the like the episode with the zombies, for example, I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't like the way it ended. It ended like it ended like it was going to conclude the storyline, but it didn't conclude the storyline. You know, in, in my opinion, it, it it ended it ended with you thinking like, oh, it's going to end. We just don't know what's going to happen. It all you know? feels like lazy writing to me. I mean, I'm not watching, but I'm I'm hearing what people have to say about it, and it's like, oh, wouldn't that be funny if we just kind of threw this idea? Yeah, but how do we flesh it out? Nah, who cares? Yeah, because uh, because just, here's what here's... just make uh, just make Black Panther Star Lord. Yeah, right. It. Yeah, yeah. Just go here's... with. It. Because <laughs> here's what I know from the comics. Because like I mean, I'm a Marvel comics fan, but I don't really read What If. Because What If, they're always they're they're always stories that aren't really continuity. Like you know, there's always a chance that you know if it, if the storylines contained within might wind up becoming continuity, but they're just thrown in a different universe. You know, in in, in the Marvel realm and stuff like that. Uh, but um, but the main thing that kind of the main thing that I'll, that like I. I'm only watching it because it's new Marvel right now, and I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Star Wars to come back on. That's really what that's really what's going on right now. <laughs> the, what if right now is the placeholder until Star Wars comes back on? Because when Star Wars comes back on, then we get the next Marvel show, whatever that's going to be. Um, but um, but yeah, like the I I like the idea of what if, but honestly, I feel like they're it's lazy writing, like you said, uh, like you said, Stoy. It's lazy writing, um, in my in my opinion. And you know, I don't like I do. N- I do not like accusing writers of being lazy. I yeah. don't because as a writer myself, I I never want to be put put in that in that category as well. But I mean, you know, like everybody everybody watches like shows for like everybody watches shows like basically for the the literary or the or the or the or the, or the, the theatrical like money shot basically. They, they, yeah, they, they want, want content. They want they want the content and they want to be satisfied. And the only thing this is satisfying for me is just I'm just getting more Marvel. That's that's about all. You no, know, Laron. As a member of the writing community, I take deep offense to that. No, no I'm just kidding. Um, I'm I'm glad you mentioned it though, because see, I actually did try to catch up with What If, and I completely uh-huh. forgot to mention it during my portion, just because unfortunately it was kind of forgettable. And that it is, yeah, that's not what I want to say about it. I wanted to love What If so 
badly. I w- I'm a huge Marvel person. I did kind of, for some reason, stop once the TV show started. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I kind of fell behind, like WandaVision Every- and Loki. Everybody's, and everybody's got, everybody's got, they've got Marvel fatigue right now. I will say yeah. that because, like, because, like, because, like, two of my roommates, they're big fans of the MCU, but they just cannot bring themselves to watch like the, the shows right now. And, uh, like, I, I had to, I had to beg one of my roommates to watch Loki because Loki is setting up like the next four movies for the Marvel mm-hmm. for the MCU. I you mean, know, like, so is WandaVision pretty WandaVision much is, too. WandaVision is too, but not in the same, not in the same way that happened, Loki is obviously. Yeah, what like, happened in Loki, like you basically is translating to like quite a few of the movies that are happening. Yeah. That like, are getting ready to happen. I, I wasn't even going to watch Loki cause I'm like, this looks, it looks fine. But then like, I don't know. I, I, I still really think that WandaVision is like the best TV effort so far for me. I think so too, and that's and that's hard for me to say because like I like Falcon and the Winter Soldier had me so emotional. I know I really loved Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I wish it was I longer. Too, yeah. I wish it was yeah. longer. Uh, yeah. But I I I just mean like in the terms of like because I already liked Bucky and Sam, right? Like I I already liked those characters. I knew I was going to like Falcon and the Winter Soldier because I like the Captain America. I think are the movies that I I like the most just because they feel the most grounded. I mean, we're talking about, you know, a guy that <laughs> flies with wings and a guy that throws a shield around. But uh, in terms of what Marvel has been doing, they feel the most grounded. Uh, but, like, WandaVision really turned my perspective on these characters where, like, I didn't really care about them at all. And by the end of WandaVision, they were, like, some of my favorite characters just in terms of, like, the development and what Wanda went through and through that whole show and, like, you know, it, it just did a lot for those characters for me personally. It was like, wow, well, this and, is. And the way they structured that show, remember how like they each started with like a decade theme mm-hmm. yeah. of like. So I just think the the way that it was very unique. And the thing about what if is, I like I said, I forced myself to try and love it because I, I personally like the art style. Not I know not everyone likes it. Mm-hmm. I like the concept, mm-hmm. but as I watched a couple, like most of them, I'm like, oh, <coughs> like. I did like the Doctor Strange one, and with the, oh, the Doctor Strange one was wonderful. That was probably the best one personally I've seen so far. With the zombie one, it had yeah. a lot of potential, but like you said, it, if they it fell flat. It, yeah, mm-hmm. I so to me, it's like like I I liked Captain Carter, like I really liked that one. That but was like, a good one. it was a good start too. It was but, a good start. Yeah, it was a good start. But I was like, I wish this wasn't animated, and I wish this was a movie. Like I I would have rather sat and watched like an hour and a half two hour movie of this instead of like it feels like it feels like these stories are crammed into a half hour show and they need to be longer i think i think yeah. ultimately i think ultimately what the i think ultimately the best takeaway from the Mar- from the marvel what if series is the fact that they got a lot of these actors to reprise their roles and you mm-hmm. know i it, it and just... you can tell for better or for worse that these actors are reprising their roles because like you can tell some of them have never done voiceover yes. work before yeah. which also yeah. got on my nerves yeah i mean and you know like it, it it just just hearing chadwick boseman like one two more times as t'challa like it's mm-hmm. it's, it's like man like yeah. we're gonna have to let this character go soon we are you know that's the sad part you know mm-hmm. <laughs> you know things like that but uh, that's that's my that's my ultimate takeaway from um uh, from like what if i mean you know it's just it's it's there. It's filling a void, but it's not doing what it's what it's supposed to do for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I'll just I'll just briefly go over the games because we I spend a lot of time talking about TV shows. Uh, I'm currently playing Tales of Arise right now. Um, I'm I am just outside of the first. Well, actually, according to my roommate, I don't even think I've cleared the first act because it said it took him like six, six hours to get clear of the first act and stuff like that. So I'm basically still in the opening of Tales of Arise. I'm enjoying it. Like it's been a while since I actually picked up a um a JRPG. You mm-hmm. didn't beat Ballsack yet, did you? I did not. <laughs> I did not. I can't. No, I, I can't. There's un- a lot of Ballsack talk on this show. Oh, why? Well, I, I don't know Ballsack. You're just no, no. His name is like a ball star or something yeah. like that. But like yeah. every time someone says it, my brain, my 12 year old brain, immediately goes to Ballsack <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, I knew who you were talking I need, about. Though. I need help. Yeah, I was gonna say you were like, no, I haven't beaten him yet. No, so which I tells me you just you... brought back a horrible memory. Why'd you have to just say that word? Uh, or, oh, oh. oh gosh, what is this story? What is this led to? What is this save, led to? save it for after dark. Oh, God. <laughs> and 
and the uh, and the other game and the other game I've been playing like uh, like it, it launched yesterday on PlayStation on PlayStation and on uh, PC. I'm playing Ken of Bridge of Spirits, and my God, like I knew I wanted to play this game like like last year when they unveiled it at the at the last PlayStation showcase, but I did not realize that like I was gonna sit down, I was gonna press start, and I was immediately gonna fall in love with this game. Like I fell in love with this game in like the first three minutes. It's it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, and uh, and I can't wait to beat it so I can talk about it. Hell, I might even write the review for it for, for Boss oh, Rush. Boy, ooh, <laughs> yeah, wow. I, uh, I all I'm gonna all, all I'm gonna say is if you have a PlayStation, a PS4, a PS5, or a PC, like the game is forty dollars. Get it, mm-hmm. get it. It's a, honestly, it's an, in my opinion right now, it's an indie title that feels like it's a triple A. Wow. Okay. So it's a double A title. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. a double A. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's what they call it. Hmm. Yep. So yeah, that that there we go. Like that's that's all I'll say about that because I know I took up a lot of time with the TV shows. I mean, it's it's fine. It was good discussion. That's why we're here, Laron, to have a discussion. Intelligent discourse about ball sack. Well, I mean, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Is that I'm the name of the right. episode? <laughs> I mean, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying that's to be, gonna like, be the tag. That's going to be the tagline for the episode. Boss Rush Entertainment. A great place for discord about ball sex. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying not to be like, I'm just trying not to be like, you know, like we, we've had, we've had guests and, and spots on these shows where, you know, like we get to the, what are we playing? And they unroll the scrolls of Pythia. <laughs> that's that's Pat. That's Pat on our show. Josh, Pat could you imagine every- if game known to man could you imagine if ed and pat had a segment of what they've been playing <laughs> the rest of the, the rest of the panelists would just like turn off their cameras and walk away yeah <laughs> Pretty much, yeah i think so that's what would happen literally i'd just be like grab oh, a couple gonna, drinks make popcorn go probably yeah. knock out a couple hours of uh tales and whatever just... wow I just, all right my well, brain hurts just thinking about it i'm not gonna lie to you it's just like ah uh... That's why Ed's not invited on the podcast anymore because, like, they finished talking about their segments, and I'm like, ah, I played Forza. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's a racing game. It's pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) Can't. All right, Corey. So, how how about you? What's been what's been interesting, exciting? I went first, man. You did. Ted Lasso. So- wow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's been it's been so it's been so long it's been so that- long ago that I forgot. I see. I see how you feel about me. That's how the ball squeezing picture thing came about. Remember? Yeah. Full circle. That's why yes. we made you look up. <laughs> yes. Okay. My bad. My bad. I completely lost track and it what and I was actually playing attention. It's just that we just got so far along that you know, like hmm. I forgot. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I mean now I'm gonna get a stern talking to after the show's over. We're fine. <laughs> It's fine. I'm forgettable. It's fine. Uh, especially in the state I am today. Let me tell you what, though. Work. I'm I'm retiring today. I, work is, dude, work is kicking my ass. I'm not going to lie to you. It's just like, oh, my God. Because, like, people have quit and, you know, they don't. It's just, it's right. been, it's been a long Wait, three people- weeks. Wait, this is from the number one job, right? The, the yeah. job that you had since I first met you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I work send, I'm same. sending. I'm just sending positive vibes your way. I can't go into too much detail, but what my company is going through, we've lost three people in a month mm-hmm. that were very vital to operations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I uh, get it. Last week, between job number one and job number two i worked almost 80 hours last year word how are you still standing or sitting or whatever i don't know that's a good question and i've worked over 40 this week already so neat in addition to parenting i'm sure it's just oh yeah they're just perfect angels all the time they let me just relax it's awesome (laughs) love them dearly (laughs) children everybody they say they they change your life, and they do that. They do that. They, they do. remind you every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's actually where I ran off to earlier, is because my daughter was like, she's up still. It's ten o'clock. Didn't nap today. 
it's fine. Oh, she's committed. You know, you know, you know what's crazy? What's crazy? I found out that sometimes the kids miss their nap. It makes it it, it forces them to go to bed later. Like I thought, mm-hmm. like you miss a, if I miss a nap, I'm going to bed early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with kids, they get this overtired thing, and they get super wired at bedtime. Mm-hmm. I've been victim to that many a time. <laughs> yeah, so. it's like it's like two or three times a week for me, especially because my daughter just started preschool, and like all she wants to do is talk about her friends and what they did at school, and it's like. Did you tell her they're not her real friends? No. No, oh but it's funny. God, what's that so, you, need to, you need to sit down and have this conversation with them. So, You're not going to be friends with these people. This is why I don't have kids. So, okay. You're not so, going to be friends with these people after preschool. My, Wait, I thought you had kids, Toy. <laughs> no, I don't. Zero. <laughs> no, you you can you're very capable of having kids. That's that's, that's shit my mom said to me. <laughs> <laughs> he has a kid. It's right there. With its red glowing eyes. It's piercing into my soul. Uh so my wife and I like she's she's tired from like staying up all night with my son because he wakes up every 45 minutes to hour and a half just like just wakes up is ready to go just you know so she she wakes up and since I she deals with him because she knows that it would benefit me sleeping more because she works from home uh, to sleep so I can go to work and I'm exhausted from work and like, yeah, it's just, it's been, it's been a man, this adding the second kid was just like, it was like putting life on hard mode. I was like, man, this is, this is, I don't it know. Sounds more that, like nightmare mode. Honestly. Oh my God. Mm. And, and, I hate to say it that way, but, but like, I was about to, I was about to tell you a really bad joke to like, to like, you want your son to sleep at night. Here's what you do. But I don't want us to get canceled. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, we can use our imagination to be fair. <laughs> Bop. No, not even no, not even that. To be fair, Austin said he didn't care that a little girl died yesterday, so it's fine. Whoa! In, in, hold on, hold on. In context, Damn, in, in the context, Last of Us, we're talking about the Last of Us. Oh. Okay, okay, yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> I gotta put context on it. You know, yeah, I, I don't. I don't want people in crossroads. I'm just saying, tonight. Austin and I had a really good time last night, and it's partially why I'm a little bit tired tonight. It's fine. Corey, Corey, when I tell you, like I, like I was editing the show, I was editing the show today, man. I can, I can throw at least fifteen minutes worth of, of, of outtakes of both you and him. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> oh my god, the part about the, the part about the sex mini games in God of War that, that is gold. <laughs> I'm just saying that right stick was good to me and Austin <laughs> in the right times of our lives. I guess that's tell you like the circle move with the with the left and that's how i met hey. my wife hey <laughs> the flames went out in the candles okay that's all i have to say <laughs> uh what were we talking about oh i was talking <laughs> i was talking about my daughter going to preschool and somehow we ended up <laughs> sex games and god of war <laughs> jesus <laughs> uh so you sure you want me doing after dark <laughs> Yeah. No, I thought we already said Stephanie's hosting after dark. <laughs> or rotate. She's, she's she's hiding out in a lot of stories apparently. <laughs> yeah, don't All be right. fooled by this innocent facade. Oh, oh nobody nope. nobody is. Nobody, nobody is. Nobody is. <laughs> All right, it's the innocent right, ones you have to be the most scared of. That's what I hear. All right, so your daughter uh, has friends. Yeah, yes. so my <laughs> No, she doesn't. My wife, my wife and I just laugh because the, this one, ki- there's two kids in her class that have the same first name, so they call them by their first and last name. Uh-huh. And like, God, am I gonna get in trouble for saying some kid's name on this show? Because it's really funny. Uh, just, 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 th- just give them a fake name. I mean, if you say like, I can't, uh, you know, give Sarah, them Sarah B has lupus. Or you know what? Like that, that would be no. You know what? Though. If I get this kid's parents don't listen, it's fine. Uh. <laughs> My, she says this kid's name in like one syllable, and she's like, "I I play with I play with Lucas Bravo. His name is Lucas Bravo, and it's mm-hmm. like, no, it ain't. It is stupid name. She, but she says it. She says all of her friend's name is like Lucas one Bravo? syllable. Get like it's is he a cartoon character? I mean, he's Johnny Bravo's cousin. Okay, you know what? You know the more I hear story. <laughs> okay, okay. Has anybody here seen that movie Due Date with Robert Downey Jr.? 
and uh, Zach yes. Galifianakis. Yes. You remember, you remember when? You remember when? Um, you remember when that kid was fucking with, with Robert Downey Jr. and he punched him in the stomach, and yeah. he immediately like covered his mouth and just sat him down on the couch. <laughs> that story. That, that, and, that, that, and the sad part is, and the sad part is, like uh, Robert Downey Jr. He even warned the kid. He's like, "You got one more time, I'll put hands on you." That was the line. He's, yeah. he's like, "You got one more time, I'll put hands on you." <laughs> Accurate. It's <laughs> fair. Came I, watched the, it's I, fair. I watched the Always Sunny in Philadelphia clip, um, where uh, Mac and Charlie go beat up a bunch of kids in this neighborhood. And there's a and they we're talking like holding them by their necks and slamming them down to the ground. And there's a clip on YouTube where they're playing the Doom music at the same <laughs> oh, time. No, I watched that clip pretty religiously. <laughs> wow. And you're and, and you're and you're a high school soccer coach. Yes, I am. <laughs> you're I probably, teach kids. You're, you're, probably, <laughs> oh you're probably you're probably the coach that's encouraging the goalie to drop kick just drop kick strikers when they when they when they approach. No, actually, one of my kids last night at the soccer game, he got a yellow card because he took this kid. He cleaned this kid out. And honest, but honestly, the kid deserved it. He really deserved it. So, like, he can't, he had to get subbed off the field. Once you get a yellow card in high school, you got to get taken off the field. So, I gave the kid a high five. I was like, he had to come. (laughs) And the kid laughed at me. He's like, can I go back in? And I was like, yeah, go back in. (laughs) Wow. Um, sometimes sometimes they deserve it i mean it's just one of those things i'm i'm sorry like if you if you're gonna act like a bitch you're gonna get hit like a bitch like it's just one of those things <laughs> I, i'm so Bring glad it, stoy got, is here i tonight. gotta i gotta I, I i gotta i gotta come to one of stoy's soccer games i got i have to <laughs> yeah no kidding oh that's yeah. hilarious it's it, it's entertaining to say the least Wow. I'm fine. I, you know, I'm mostly fine. I'm not like when I. <laughs> you're not. You're not a psychopath. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not because like, <laughs> you know, listen. There's a lot of things you can't control in this world, and like, but like, you know, I'll be vocal about something, and then I'll kind of maybe laugh it off, like whatever. So like, but um, when I used to coach girls, actually, and this is an interesting dynamic, because people always ask me like, oh, who do you like coaching, boys or girls more? And I say girls more because girls get angry as fuck. <laughs> girls are mean to each other like if i'm coaching in a game and i sub a girl out you know and she's like coach i want to slap that i want to hit that girl so hard and i was like all right go in there and do it and they do it they do it and they feel that they feel immediately better afterwards and it's like squashing the beef basically that's it boys get all whiny coach that guy's making me upset you know like, what well, that is so true. That is so true. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause me and a buddy, we used to coach, we used to coach, uh, coach Pee Wee League football. And oh my God, like little boys, like, <laughs> yeah, coach, he's making me upset. It's like, so what? Like, but, you know, g- girls are just like, coach, I'm gonna hit that girl. Like, like all right, like, you want, like, you want to see a difference between like boy, uh, like 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 boys and girls sports? Like, l- look at basketball. Like, oh yeah. Look at look at basketball, like young kids, like boys no. basketball teams, completely different dynamic from girls basketball teams. I'm girls gonna tell you, <laughs> women's and men's soccer, completely oh, yeah. different. A man, a, a guy gets hit, he's flopping on the ground like he's yep. a dead fish, you know, yep. acting like the world's ending. You see the girl get knocked down, the girl gets knocked down, she gets up with this gets, fire rage in her and eyes, she runs and down, she the- runs down that girl that hit her, and she slam tackles her, throws her up in the air, slams her down to the ground. Referee's like, all right, chill. Blows a whistle, chill. Oh, <laughs> story. I'm going to send you a meme. Okay, cool. But, like, yeah, that's literally the difference. That's why sometimes I like watching women's soccer because, you know, there's no flopping. There's no whining. Girls get up and play. That's what they're there for. And, yeah, they – um. That's what we do. That's, that's what the, they do. It's what the they major, do. And I encourage it fully, 100%. That's the major difference between men and women. That's also why. That's also why when men get sick, they out, they automatically have the man flu. They can have like the twenty four hour sniffles, and it's the man Listen, flu. Listen, that's because their testosterone levels are so low that they're <laughs> unable to function. Okay, that's the physiological reason why men get sicker. Men need high levels of testosterone to function. Just saying. Wait. So we got this all from. Okay. So what happened to this Bravo kid? Yeah. Uh, Story. This kid. I don't want to talk about this kid. My look, my, my kid was just like she was all excited because they were sharing horses and farm animals and stuff, 
And like, it's just funny because like the kid's name is funny. That's all. Oh, this is so wholesome, and we just got through talking about kids beating the fuck out of each other. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding. You can't end the story like that. My ki- my kid does need to work on not hating people though, because she punched me in the eye twice tonight. It was fun. She just That's- looked at me and laughed like this, like this evil what? laugh, and she was just like, she then she just punched, she punched me in the face. It's funny. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, Anyways, Stephanie, that meme is quite accurate. Yep. Yes, I need to quite see accurate this because you know what? One one of the kids, I, I was watching a JV game. One of the kids took a light ball to the head. So I'm boom, took a little hit. No big deal. Kept playing. Then all of a sudden, a minute later, coach, I need to get subbed out. Coach pulls him out. He's like, are you okay? Are you hurt? He's like, no, I got hit in the head. I'm like, so? Well, I just wanted to take a rest. <laughs> Do you have a headache? No. Do you feel dizzy? No. Do you have any any kind of symptoms? No. I just got hit in the head. Like, what? <laughs> oh, boo. This is why I need to go, this is why I need to go to one of one of Stoy's games that he coaches because like I, I would I would just live I, I would know that there's some shenanigans going on if like that forehead vein that like everybody gets when they're super yeah. pissed off. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh well, we've been going for an hour and a half now. <laughs> um, I think I I don't think we're gonna get through everyone's topic tonight. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Do we want to do a topic or do we want to? I kind of loosely talked about my topic. It's, it's what? <laughs> Which one? It was it was the whole soccer thing, the difference between boys and girls. Because mm. right now, because right now I'm coaching boys, uh, high school and. You know, they just came up to me today like, Coach, we really want to go to homecoming because we have a game that Friday night. Mm-hmm. And they're, I'm like, man, I could give a fuck about homecoming when I was a kid. But it's, it's different nowadays, especially now with kind of the way things are. And one of our kids just got pulled from co- for COVID protocols and stuff. So that pissed everybody off. So we all took a picture. Everybody took a picture arm to arm standing in solidarity with this kid. It was actually kind of funny. But it was almost like heartwarming at the same time, because like they really wanted to stand with solidarity with this kid while he was being while he's now he's being quarantined. Quarantined, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I there I got to post a picture actually to our group. But yeah, like, I mean, that's the life I'm living right now, where it's literally like you know hours hours a day, like five days a week, basically. I'm I'm invested in this, and you know, it's like. A lot of times I want to be that mean asshole coach, but I'm I'm kind of just ha- more having more fun with it now where I'm like, eh, if the kids are having fun, I guess I'm more having fun. And I just got to kind of let things go after a while. And I just want the kids to have fun right now. Hey, hey, story. I got to ask you a question. As yeah. a as a coach, do you have do you have that moment? And you know, you know, the moment I'm talking about that moment where like where like you literally get up on the wrong side of the bed and it is your job to just like make everybody's life miserable. <laughs> For the rest of the day, <laughs> once once they hit practice, yeah, no kid, yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, God, that happened last week. I was just, I was sick of their shit from from the start. Like, I don't think even practice started, and I was already sick of their crap. And I'm just like, man, every five minutes, my, my my throat actually got swollen from yelling so much because I was like, they weren't getting it, they weren't getting it, and I I don't think I was being patient enough with them. But man. Yeah, it was my job to make their life a living <laughs> hell that day. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That, that that doesn't happen that often. I'm going to I'm going to admit that doesn't happen that often cuz you know, I uh I understand high school kids have a lot of interests, a lot of interests, and their brains a lot of times are somewhere else. It's fair. Far away. <laughs> Definitely Very not on what they're away. doing at that moment. Yep. Like, <laughs> I'll explain what? the rules of the game and guarantee you there's at least one stupid question to say, Coach, what was that again? I'm like, I just mm-hmm. told you two seconds ago. My name, is, my name is Coach Doy, and I am sick of your shit, Adam. Yes. <laughs> Go play. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, so, like, well, well, like, actually, this happened last night where I was like, I told this kid, okay, well, you're going to sub in. You're going to take this kid out, but you're going to take this other kid's position or something like that, whatever. And, like, he subbed someone else out. 
I look to the bench and I see this kid standing there. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? He's like, I don't know. He told me to come out. I was like, he, no, he didn't. He was like, no, yeah, that's what he told me. I was like, this son of a bitch. <laughs> Kids are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That, that's all I want to say. That's all I want. That's all I'm gonna end oh, my rant. Man. Kids are stupid, man. Topic. Kids are dumb. Kids are stupid. Uh, Those hormones. Austin. Uh, Austin obviously left the chat. Do you know what? Was... You, know, you know what makes me sad about it though. Just to end, I was stupid as hell as a kid too. <laughs> like every time I get mad, I think about the stupid shit I did when I was their age, and I was like, man, I was no better. <laughs> Oh god. I'm done. Uh Stephanie, you're the you're you're the other guest here. What 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 topic do you have? <laughs> oh mine just pales Are you in comparison. Burnt out? Are you burnt out? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, my topic's not nearly as interesting. I I feel kind of like boring now. I was thinking about, hey, let's talk about video game preservation. <laughs> now I feel like that's not going to be sure nerd (laughs) come on i was like well we'll probably talk about video games because that's a lot of what we do but you know if laron or you Corey, have a more interesting topic i'm happy to defer mine to another time i'm not talk about video game preservation are we talking like just kind of saving physical copies or and like copies of games and no, no, keeping no, no, it in no, almost no, like no, a museum. No, or... let's, no, let's get real. Let's get real. Like emulation. That's how you preserve video games. Emulation. Yes. All right. Well, there you go. Hot, Wholeheartedly, one hundred percent agree. Emulation, especially especially for the fact that you know, like if, if companies aren't going to be able to make these games, you know, if they're if they're going to stop making these games after a certain time and stuff like that. But there's but there's obviously interest in playing these games and stuff like that. If you're not going to sell them, if you're not going to make it easy for us to like play the games, if you're not going to put in the work and like. Put your put your five six hundred dollar consoles to be able to like play this stuff. Then why are you being why are you being assholes about the fact that someone you know like like you hooked up a Raspberry Pi to their to their monitor and are playing your old ass games that you obviously don't care about? I was gonna say there's a particular publisher that's a bit huge offender of this. Um, that's why I wanted to you know kind of bring this up. The way this is the background story, I guess I don't know, but I had a yard sale. Like two weeks ago because I live across a senior center and they were having a yard sale. So I was like, all right, I'm going to put my shit out front too so I can make some money. Smart. And no, no one was buying anything. But I had like two Switch games out there because I just must have bought them on impulse and had no interest in playing them. And, of course, the video games were like the only thing attracting attention. And two, two guys came over and like, oh, do you have more games? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I brought out some like DS games I don't play anymore, including some Kingdom Hearts numerical fraction whatever game. I just like couldn't. Oh, that one, yes. Well, I I really love Kingdom Hearts when it first came out, and then all this whatever. So they brought more and more out, and I realized like I was I could make some money, and 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 so I decided to bring everything out. I had you know my old Game Boy Color, like my old. And 64 games, I, I br- brought my PS2 out. I'm not saying I sold everything, but I brought everything out. And it kind of made me think, okay, on one hand, I'm not a video game collector, but it's kind of cool to keep a lot of these old games. But eventually, in time, no matter how well I package my PS2 or my N64, eventually that shit's not going to work anymore. So I sold some of them, not all of them, to these people because they're actually going to play it. So I felt all warm and fuzzy inside from that. But taking taking away from that, I'm working on a Boss Rush banter on this about who's responsible for game preservation. But I, I looked up how could we properly do it, and I read a lot about emulation in that, unfortunately, some people, businesses, kind of don't appreciate when, you know, fans – you know, emulate using a ROM. Am I? Is that right, Laurent? I'm yeah. not very good with tech yeah. terms. Yeah, like does, yeah, like, uh, they... do, do, does this certain publisher's name rhymes with Finn Bendo? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think I know. I think I know. See, I wasn't. I, I wasn't trying put my to. Finger on it. I wasn't trying to. I, w- I actually wasn't trying to take it there. You know, but I was saying like, uh, oh, like it's already. We're already there. Yeah. True. True. I was trying to say though. 
emulation is the best way to preserve games. Like, I don't understand why it's such a dirty word, you know, like in the games industry, especially for it, especially for like, you know, like certain like certain publishers are coming after people for for basically they're not even selling the ROMs. That's the crazy part. They're not selling the ROMs like it's more like a library where people can check this shit out, you know. You know, and and you know what? There, there, there's something right. There's something right there too. I remember, I remember back in the day, I used to be able to go to like freaking libraries and check out Nintendo games and stuff like that. When it was Nintendo going after libraries and stuff like you know back then, were they? No. Because like obviously, like nobody, obviously, well, nobody they were was they were going after like rental places and stuff that they didn't have contracts with. I remember that was a big deal. I don't, I don't know about libraries, but I do know that like, you know. Blockbuster for a time was only selling or only renting like Genesis and Master System games because Nintendo as, was going after them. I remember, as yeah, they, I remember as some, they should, as they yeah. should, because you know what? Oh boy, I, I'm I'm not I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to say like you know sometimes you are going to do this. Do sometimes, it sometimes. Okay, okay, okay. Sometimes the decision making process makes zero sense to me because here, like I said, ultimately, like they're no longer making money off the stuff. If they if they want to make money off the stuff, they would they would put all this stuff on virtual consoles. And I understand the virtual console basically buried the Wii U. I, I get that. I get that. You know, because everybody was buying the Wii U just to play old school games. You know, I get that. You know, um, it's the best. It's the best place to play old Nintendo games like in yeah. terms of like the sheer amount of li- like the library that's there or you know what I mean like yeah well it's yeah. the system where you can play the most Legend of Zelda games yeah, yeah you can true. play them all almost yeah, yeah. except for the almost. 3DS games you can play them all yeah. yeah yeah but but you know honestly you know I just look at the fact that you know like if you do not care enough to like resell these and also resell them with common sense you know it was awesome that that Fire Emblem game for the NES was seven dollars it was not awesome that it was like only on the only on the market for a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, just do common sense stuff. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying charge charge like dirt cheap for your stuff. I I guarantee you, most people for anything for anything going all the way. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice for anything as as early as as well for anything pre Nintendo sixty four. They can probably get away with selling these, selling these, these rehashes of the ROMs, the cartridges, or whatever you want to call them, for for no more than ten dollars. Most people will spend that money, you know, mm-hmm. you know, like, sh- like, you know, I, 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 I really feel that, you know, as a, as opposed to spending three hundred dollars for certain cartridges, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and then you know, like, then you can understand why. Oh well, well, somebody went to a website and wrote a ROM, and and we're mad. You, know, mm-hmm. you didn't. You didn't even make the three hundred dollars that a reseller got for your damn cartridge. Why I, are you pissed? <laughs> so my entire Nintendo sixty four collection, except for like five games, is complete in box, and I probably have like thirty or forty in sixty four games. And I started like I, I started selling some of them, and I was just like, I don't like. There are certain games that give me joy to look at, and but like, mm. I I sold Paper Mario complete inbox and i i undercut a lot of people just because i wanted to get rid of it and like sell fast or whatever Damn. for 180 dollars, i sold paper mario and that's complete nice inbox. and i was wow. like that's nice yeah and i was like how, it, i sold. how like, much was how much was like the 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 suggested price for it uh some of them were going for about 200 a little bit more at the time oh, this was like a year ago like mm. right when the pandemic was like mm-hmm. really hitting you know and like I, I wanted the Xbox Series X, so I was started to sell some stuff that I didn't care about just to like, you know, not waste any of my quote real money on it. Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a collector, but I'm not collector enough. And you know what? You know what? Honestly, you hurt me from would stop me from being a collector. I used to be one of those people that I would buy collector's editions for stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. when these games come out and stuff like that, because you know I wanted all the I wanted all the swag and all that stuff. Uh, you know what killed me on that? The Metal Gear Solid Four Collector's Edition. There, uh, what was it? It was like that black sleeve with the two DVD, like the two Blu-rays in them in it, right? And then like a sleeve on it, like. Yeah, well, that's what. Yeah, yeah that's what, yeah, that's that what we it. got. That's what we got. But it was planned. It was planned for a lot more. And as the, and as it got closer and closer to shipping, we started we started getting news that you know like they were scaling back on some of the stuff that was in it. So ultimately, by the time it came out, like. My ninety dollar pre order didn't didn't feel like it was substantial anymore. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I. Uh... Paper Mario is now worth almost three hundred dollars. Mm. 
should have waited. It's yeah, fine. so yeah, so like I'm a collector, but I'm not collector enough. It, like Corey, Corey, you know you're you're one of the main reasons why. Like, and I'm not saying this to, in a bad way or anything. You're mm-hmm. one of the main reasons why I finally loosened up and I buy more digital stuff now than I buy physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, lame. The thing, the thing, I, lame, <laughs> lame. I just like Josh, Josh and I on the podcast are very very fanatical about physical copies because him and I are collectors, like. Mm-hmm. To the nth degree. So, oh, well, well, I like uh, the, you know the reason. Is... Well, the reason why I started doing all digital stuff is because like my kid. To be honest, like I didn't like she. She's the one kid that would think a switch cartridge tastes delicious. She's oh, she, she's that kid, right? No. And so like I saw her like in here messing around with some physical switch games and like taking them out. I was like, Ooh. and this was when she was like like one ish. Right, so I was like, "Oh gosh, this is gonna be bad if I don't do something." Like this. They're so, small enough. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I ended up getting rid of most of my physical copies of Switch. I kept all the Zelda games. Like, there's certain franchises where I will buy the physical copy just because it's like, I don't know, some dumb sentimental nostalgia reason. Uh, but what I've started doing, probably. With especially with PlayStation and Xbox, because I started going all digital on that like w- a long time ago. Nintendo was like the last holdout. Uh, I started getting like statues of the games that like the franchises that I enjoy. Like I have a, I have an Aloy and a Kratos statue behind me. I have a bunch of Destiny crap and a bunch of Halo crap sitting over here. Like that's how I collect games now. Is like these. Mm-hmm cool collectibles because like even physical copies of games like 20 30 40 years from now you're gonna get like disc rot or Mm -hmm. i don't know somebody's gonna step on your disc and you're not gonna have it and then you're gonna pay an arm and a leg now especially now because like it it seems like after what after like black friday like that that year's games are like they're just gone unless you go to gamestop and pay like yeah whatever but you know this is what this is also a reason why I honestly wish that, you know, like, like, you know, like when you buy, when you buy a physical copy, you also get a digital copy mm-hmm. of it because like, you know, it's, I think it's kind of a travesty that I'm actually one, shocked that there's not like, okay, you want the physical edition, it's 60 or $70 or whatever. But if you want one that comes with a digital copy so you can keep your physical copy nice or whatever, it's like an extra 20 bucks or something. It's like it's like how Blu-rays oh, were. It's like how, yeah, it's Blu-rays like how Blu-rays were when they first came out. Yeah. Blu-rays were so high because you got the phys- you got a physical and a digital version of it, and the know? DVD to take on the road in your DVD. Oh yeah, that's that's travel if you spent DVD. That's if you spent forty five dollars. You spent thirty five dollars. You got the physical yeah. plus the digital. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... yeah, but uh, but I mean, you know, like I, you know, that's nothing that kind of burns me up though. Like you know, it's like it's like you like look what you started, Stephanie. Well, then that's good. It's a good remember, it's a remember, good remember about ten minutes ago, she said this. This isn't going to be as well, exciting as boring, soccer kinda. fights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, story, you're the one that called me a nerd, and yes, I'm proud I've of it. I've called everybody on this podcast. A nerd, <laughs> yeah, he has, so. he has. Like I've, like I've been called a nerd three times tonight. Yeah. But I do, I do have a question. This might be something that maybe I don't fully understand. Mm-hmm. With ele- electronic copies of games. Like for older systems, or like maybe if we look like 10, 20 years down down the road, aren't they aren't companies kind of shutting down digital stores? Yeah, it's some yeah, of them depending on licensing because like the like so Xbox just took Forza Motorsport Seven off the digital store mm. because of they didn't license the cars or the music in perpetuity. So like they had like a what like a five-year license years. for these cars or the, this years. music. Yeah, four years. Yeah. And uh, once those licenses are up, they can't sell the game anymore because they, they don't have the car licenses anymore, which is going to be fascinating because theoretically the next Forza Motorsport is going to be, is going to be a live service game, which uh, I, we don't know that for sure, but that's theoretically what's going to happen, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. And like you can't – like you they don't really license cars in perpetuity, right? Like they just car companies just don't want to do that. And some car companies don't want you to, if there's car damage in your game, they don't want to license their car because they don't want their cars to get damaged, even in a digital space. Um, And like the one thing for me is like, especially in terms of game preservation, a game like destiny, that's like a living game, right? Mm. That 
original version of Destiny just doesn't exist anymore. Even if you own the disc, like it just doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, like yeah, like Destiny is not the same game it was when it mm-hmm. launched. There's no mm-hmm. Dinklebot. There's no terrible leveling system. Like all that stuff that was in that original game is just is non existent now. You know? Yeah, that's Dinklebot. That's all- <clears throat> yeah, and it, even Destiny Two. The if you loaded up Destiny Two right now. The game that you start playing as a new character is not the same game that you start as a new character when the game launched. That original campaign in Destiny 2 is just not in the game anymore. They just took the whole thing out. Really? Yeah. I did not the, know that. The, like, the base vanilla campaign is not even in Destiny 2 anymore. So if you want to play the Red War campaign, you just can't play it anymore. You have to watch a YouTube video on it because it's just not there. <laughs> Oh. And that's that's like a really interesting part of game preservation that I don't know if people really think about yet is like pre-patched games, live service games, that kind of thing. Like what happens to those versions of the game, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just it's just kind of sad, you know. And I and Forever. I mean, the reason why they took that stuff out of Destiny, is they changed engines and made engine upgrades and stuff and they only had time to move certain assets over uh because of the pandemic and everything and they had to cut content before the eventually it's all going to be back i think at some point but right now it's like well there's there's whole locations you can't go to there's whole planets you can't visit anymore in destiny because just things happen you know i i don't know but i think that's the interesting part of preservation that we haven't gotten to yet so, I don't know. It's just it's fascinating. Yeah, that was a wonderful. That was a wonderful topic, Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, what a, yeah. What a big topic. Yeah, I just thought about it, and like for, for example, like with my my DS and a couple of games I purchased online. Like I kind of wonder when there will be a day where maybe that will be shut down, and does yeah. that mean I'll lose all those copies, and at least or until the device dies, then? Mm-hmm. And I mean, you look at the Wii. You, you look at the yeah. Wii, like the Wii store is gone. Like if you didn't download those games before the Wii store shut down, you just don't have those games anymore. You can't even go download them anymore. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why I'm like also thinking, do mm-hmm. just real quick, do ports, even remakes or remasters, is that is that considered like a appropriate way to preserve games or not? But I, I, think, I so because like I, when you think about it, each passing generation wants to have an, a good experience with it. Because, you know, if you tell someone to play Silent Hill 2 right now, it's going to be pretty janky. Or the original Resident yeah. Evil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Real janky. So that's why you have a Resident Evil 2 remake for newer audiences. Mm-hmm. And that gets people interested, maybe even going back to play the original game. Yeah, so. I think I think the remake stuff, especially for Final Fantasy 7 and Resident Evil 2, remakes like that, is like... It's how you like. It's how you remember p- those old games, like how you, your mind wanted it to look back then. I feel like mm-hmm. it really captures the spirit of those games, while ma- giving it like the modern, you know, the feel. modern yeah. feel mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I think is it. And you can still go back to the old games if you want to. I re- would really like them to just like. I'm kind of surprised actually that like Final Fantasy VII didn't just come with a version of the PS One. Final Fantasy Seven, you know, I think that would have been a, like a neat touch. Are you are you playing with your doll, Stoy? Is this <laughs> what I'm watching right now? Is we're having She's a nice, waving. serious conversation about well, that game preservation? That's not a good uh, hand raise. So I don't. Know. <laughs> God. That down. Oh. <laughs> God. No, that is kind of interesting. I, you know, I almost wish uh, games would do that, where mm-hmm. they would give you like the vanilla version. Like Resident mm-hmm. Evil Two remake would have been cool. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I can almost, like, understand, and I think a lot of the reason maybe why emulation doesn't work for the major publishers, it could be licensing and trademark. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're talking, like, development yeah. teams that maybe trademarked the game, and they don't have the rights. The companies don't have the rights to it. I mean, but that's I think, why, that's why I, I like... know there's a moratorium on a lot of that stuff. So, like, I think, like, 20 or 30 years. So that's why these retro systems can actually sell retro systems. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can actually buy a retro Nintendo system, you know, from a third, from a third party company mm-hmm. or like a super Nintendo system, whatever, because it's like a, a something with the moratorium of the licensing. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, that's why, that's why it's so hard to 
license the ninja the classic ninja turtles games is because mm-hmm. like the licensing for those old ninja turtles games exists in like four or five different places you know the the yeah. music in those games exists with one company the game uh ex- like the game publishing exists with konami the license to those old games uh exists with like uh what rim or something irm and it's like well we're just never going to get turtles in time or hyperstone heist or those nes games like we're just never going to get those games again and it sucks because you know that's why at you least go physical all, all i have all those games i have all those games that is physically. true that is true that is the that's, that's the number one game argument preservation it's game I, preservation at its finest i yeah, also ever, uh replace comes a problem when you're sitting here saying you want an inbox copy of hyperstone heist and then when you find out how much an inbox copy of hyperstone heist is it's going to piss you off because it's like it doesn't piss me off because it's, it's in my basement right now well it doesn't piss me off either because i yeah i have it too but like if you didn't have it but you're like oh man i really want to play that game again you know, find out it's like three hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the nature. That's the nature of the beast, and you know, a lot of people have to straddle that line because they're because they're they're purists out there. You know, like yeah. I like I like they're purists out there. They want they want the physical copy, but they also want to play the game. Mm-hmm. So you know, like they have to they have to figure out like where they're willing to you know jump through the hoops for it and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, and you know, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's pros and cons to like emulation versus physical and physical versus emulation. And, you know, just going out there and basically, like, you know, wrecking your kid's college fund just so you can play, like, Super Mario, uh, like, like the Super Mario All-Stars from Super NES. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I think I think the thing, too, that people are going to start noticing is, like, I mean, we kind of already touched on it, but, like, cartridge-based games are really, they're easier to fix than, like, the systems are easier to fix than disc-based ga- systems or even digital systems like you think about the nes like i replaced the pins in the nes and put a new power supply in it and it works fine so easy now yeah Yeah. it works like easy now yeah yeah it works it works better than the day i got it like it literally better than the day i got it because you had to like slam slam the cartridge in and blow in it and stuff and now i don't i don't have to blow in the cartridge anymore i I miss i miss the simple days of 80s and early 90s electronics like we shoot like I like I'm an IT guy and I build computers and, and like and like some of the crap I go through just to like it, some of the crap I went through just to breathe like a few months extra life into my PlayStation Three is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like you look you look at the Wii like the Wii U is an example of something that I've been thinking about recently because I got it on launch day but that console is approaching ten years old that tablet isn't going to last forever. Right, Mm-mm. that that touch screen is. Uh, you probably you probably have stuck pixels stuck pixels in it right now, don't you? I I don't know. I haven't really turned it on in a uh, while. You know, like I okay. I've turned it on once because like I wanted to play Wind Waker, but I played it with a the Wii U Pro controller. I didn't play it with the tablet, but like yeah, I mean that tablet's I, gonna die before the console does. Because I know the other day I know the other day I turned on my PS Vita and I found the stuck pixel and I mm-hmm. I about had a fit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or even even the Switch. One day you're not going to be able to play that console undocked mm-hmm. because that screen's going to die. Yeah. And it, it's just like, man, this is it's sad to think about like the one company that every <laughs> the one company that everybody has so much nostalgia for, like those the newer consoles from them are just going to like mm-hmm. be useless. Well, yeah, I, I think that's where third party companies will kind of take the reins. Yeah. You know? And uh, start building some retro systems mm-hmm. for those. Um, I'm currently waiting on my Poly Mega system. Um, um, I think it's supposed to play Sega Saturn, Sega CD games, and PlayStation games. Oh, which I've, I'm seen, pretty excited oh I've for. seen those. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah that I was a big. I pre-ordered that like last year. That was a big deal and... because Sega Saturn is like notoriously hard yes. to emulate. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. I'm pretty excited for that. So that I mean, hopefully that should be arriving at my door sometime and then in the we, next month. Like, how much? How much? And is then we that? got the Dreamcast, where all you had to do was like <laughs> put the the Bleemcast disc in, and then you could play anything you wanted. Right. Yeah, pretty yeah. much all my friends had that. Ooh. I think that's why that system died. Ooh, yeah, it is why that system died. Everybody yeah. bought the console and burned all their games. Yeah, this right. Thing, I'm kidding. Ooh, this thing's eight hundred dollars. Ooh. Uh, Dreamcast. Poly though. Mega. Wait, wait. Well, I, 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 well, I, clicked I, on paid... the, I clicked on the bundle. Like, apparently, yeah. the bundle gets you the NES, the Super NES, and the Super Famicom, 
the uh, the mega the mega drive the genesis 32x and pce what pce pce what, what, what console is that oh i think that was uh isn't that the turbo graphics PC- yeah PCI, pc engine I thought that was the pc yeah. engine the sgx yeah. and tg16 is turbo graphics okay i forget i i know i spent i pre-ordered it and i spent 300 dollars for it um and uh it came with like yeah like the disc drive in it and obviously the cartridges and stuff and then the third their third party controller that they made uh-huh. but this same company is actually making a light gun uh-huh. for uh lcd uh-huh. uh and uh modern yeah, I saw that. yeah so pretty excited for that place some time crisis uh-huh. basement oh wait and it'll play the original like I, I see this one for super nes it'll play the original cartridges mm-hmm. yep yeah oh. yeah that's like yeah, their I, whole thing I have, I have a retron 5 that uh, that's what i literally use when i uh Want to play retro games? Yeah. So. With modern technology like save states. Got gotcha. you. Can gotcha. Do, you can do uh, on on the spot upscaling of graphics. I mean, Amazing. I mean, I I mean, I I jailbroke my Vita. Wow. That's how I just dis- that's how I discovered my stuck pixel because I because I I I turned my my Vita. That on was your like punishment. I, I turned my Vita <laughs> on for like the first time in like in like. You're two not years. supposed to do that. <laughs> wow. Well, that was a great topic. Yeah, it was. It was a great topic. Yay. Good job, Stephanie. A plus. Stephanie, Stephanie bringing that thunder. Nerd. <laughs> anyway, I didn't say it this time. <laughs> I didn't say it this time. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's a consensus that we're all nerds. It's fine. Yes. Oh yeah. It's fine. We're gonna wrap the show though. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to the return of the Boss Rush podcast. Again, I apologize for being kind of tired and under the weather. It's fine. You look like you're going to fall over, man. I'm not going to lie. I you got, you got multiple babies and you're working like crucial jobs. I've been really thinking about just sleeping at my desk. Gonna... Do it. That's how you lose your job, Corey. No, it's fine. Nah. I don't have That'd a desk fine. at work, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's like a shared space. It's gross. But anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. If you like the show, please subscribe the boss rush youtube channel or if you listen on apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star rating and a nice review it will really help us out stephanie stoy ron i appreciate your time stoy where can we find you well you can follow me on arsenal x the boss rush podcast where we talk all about xbox and you can follow me at exp cast that's my other flagship podcast uh we record episodes every monday and thursday uh and uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at expcast. Nice, Stephanie. Where can we find you? Um, I am on many of the social medias, but uh, I guess you could follow me on Twitter at klimov underscore author. And I, as mentioned, I write for Boss Rush, and you'll see me in my, my articles there. See, I, I'm too tired. I'm starting to like lose track of how I'm constructing my sentences. <laughs> you can see me in my articles. <laughs> in my articles. Um, yeah, so check them out. Laurent. All right. Uh, you can catch me every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash xs 803 for Crossroads PlayStation Podcast, uh, where I am one of, I'm one of four co-hosts on the show. And uh, and also xs 803 that's my YouTube channel, as well as my gamer tag. So, you, so don't forget it, EXODUS803. Nice. You can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast. You can find me hosting Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. And you can find me doing other things here on this here internet. Thank you everybody so much for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Bye. Take care. says bye too. Bye. God, it's so close. It's so close. <laughs> Those piercing Shit. eyes. I'm so uncomfortable.